After you compiled a Gian4 application program written by somebody else, such as the official Gian4 examples or Gears, the first thing you may want to do is to check what kind of detectors are simulated in this program. You can do so by browsing the source code or better to visualize it. If the detector geometry is written by you, visualization would help you to figure out if anything appears as what you want. The visualization chapter of the Gen4 menu for application developers describes in detail all the visualization method that is available in Gen4. However, some of them may work for you, others may not. Let's start with something that definitely works for you, no matter what. The first one is called ASCII tree. You can find detailed explanation of it in the section called Visualization of Detector Geometry Tree in the Gen4 menu for application developers. It is also explained in Gears Examples Detector Visualization folder. It does not really visualize the detector geometry. Instead, it prints a hierarchical list of volumes in a detector on your screen, like this one shown in your Gen4 menu. The only Gen4 command you need to use this method is called visDrawTree. You can use another command called visAskTree verbals to control the amount of information to be printed on your screen. The higher the number, the more information. I found that number 13 prints the right amount of information on your screen. You can directly type in these commands in the Gen4 interactive session. Or to save these commands in a ASCII.mac file and run it by typing gears ASCII.mac in the directory where the Mac file is saved. Let's take a look what's in ASCII.mac file. For sure, it contains the two commands we just introduced, this ASCII verbals 13 and this draw tree. I want to emphasize that these two commands has to be called after another command called run initialize. The reason is because this command will trigger the construction of the detector in your memory. Without it, you have nothing to visualize. The first command is used to tell Gears well to find the detector definition file. We're going to talk more about it in the next video. The last command is used to check if there is any overlapping between detector components. This would never happen in reality. However, it may happen more frequently than what you would think in a computer program. It prints out information like this in your terminal in case everything is okay. It warns you in case some overlapping is detected. In the Linux or Mac terminal, you can use the Mac file as a argument of a Gears command. In this specific example, the ASCII tree lists three detector components called Gears 1, 2, and 3. They are made of different materials. The first one is made of stainless steel, the second one is made of brass, the third one is made of paraffin. They are all placed in another volume called World which is filled with air. In a Windows machine, you can easily get a terminal by highlight your address bar and type CMD and return. The second visualization method I would like to mention is called Ray Tracer. You can find detailed explanation of it in both the official Gen4 menu and in Gears. As indicated by its name, Ray Chaser shows the profile of the detector by shooting a bunch of fake rays through the volume of the detector. The profile of the detector will be shown once you have enough intersection points. A sample Ray Chaser macro file is shipped with Gears. Let's take a look at the command init. We've talked about the first three commands. 
The fourth command is used to display the visualization setup for the individual detector components, such as the color or the line width. Ray Tracer can be caught using the command this open, followed by the name of the visualization method. Before you draw volume of your detector on a virtual canvas, you can set up the background of the canvas, the style of your drawing, or the viewpoint of your camera. The last command is used to generate a JPG file in your hard disk. Open the JPG file, you should be able to see the visualized detector geometry. The biggest advantage of this method is that it can be used for geometries that other tools may fail to visualize. The drawback of this method is that tracks of particles cannot be shown together with the detector geometry. The third method I'd like to mention is called VRML. Let's take a look at the contents of the sample VRML macro shipped with gears. The real name of the method is called VRML2 file. Remember, the method name is case sensitive. If you change it to lower cases, it won't work. In addition to the draw volume and the viewer flush command, I created a 2MeV isotropic gamma ray in the center of our detector. In this simulation, 10 gamma rays are emitted. I then accumulate all the particle trajectories of this 10 event in the output file. After the execution of the macro file, it generates a g4.wrl file in the same directory. This file has to be viewed using an external program. The first one can be installed in any Linux distribution without the root privilege. The second one can be easily installed in Windows and Mac. View 3D Sim can be installed easily in Ubuntu using the standard apt command. After the installation, you can use the command to open the g4wrl file. You can use your mouse to rotate your geometry. After the installation of free wrl in the Windows machine, you can simply double click on the output file to visualize it. In the worst case scenario that you failed installing any external program to visualize the VRML output files. You can still use a shell script v2x shipped together with the vrml.mac file to convert a g4wrl file to a g4x3d file. The latter can be embedded into a HTML file which can be opened in any modern browser such as Firefox or Chrome. The icon in the Gears website is a demonstration of this method. Click on it and then follow the instruction here to examine your detector geometry. The last method I'd like to mention is TabRap file. Remember, the method name is case sensitive. Please type it in as it is. In addition to the particle trajectories, you can add more things into your canvas together with the detector geometry, such as axis of the coordinate system, date, and scale. A successful execution of the Mac file would generate a G4 data hep wrap file in the same directory. It can be viewed using an external program called HapRap in wireframe mode, that is, no surface, only outlines. The problem of this program is that it only runs in a very old Java version 1.8, while the current Java version is 14. The Java shipped with Ubuntu is at version 11. In a Windows machine, you can easily download and install an old version of Java 
In case of Mac or Ubuntu, please refer to Google on how to install an old version of Java. Once you download the hepwrap.jar file from the internet, you can double click on its icon and run it. You can then load the output file from Gears to visualize the detector geometry. You can expand the detector component list in the right panel and turn individual components off and on. You can change the sizes of both panels. A right click on the left panel would give you access to a lot of cool functions available in this geometry browser. For example, you can change the mouse function from scaling to rotation and then drag the geometry using your mouse. One cool function I like a lot is pick to measure. You can measure the distance from one point in your geometry to another point and get the measured length out of it. Another cool thing about this browser is that you can turn individual particle trajectories off and on. And you can use these two arrows to go to the previous or next event. To summarize, these four visualization methods, ASCII tree, ray tracer, VRML, and HEPREP file, are available in any GEM4 installation. You should be able to use one of them as long as you have a GEM4 installed in your system. The last two methods are more powerful, but they do require external visualization programs. It may take you some time to install one of those programs, but trust me, it's worth the effort. There are still many other visualization methods that I haven't covered in this video. For example, the cute front end of the OpenGL method is very nice. You can rotate it, you can switch from um, the solid mode to the wireframe mode, You can also use a right click to bring up a lot of other functions to control your visualization. However, it does require you to enable Qt in your Gen4 installation process. It may not available in any Gen4 installation.